What's happening, dogs? Mr. Allen here with some graphing of rational functions. And when it comes to graphing rational functions, there's a ton of information that we can be asked for. But they all start the same way. If possible, we're going to factor first. So numerator here, does anything multiply to negative 6 and add to 1? Yes, that would be positive 3 and negative 2. So x plus 3, x minus 2 would be my two factors. And then in my denominator, does anything multiply to positive 2 while adding to negative 3? Yes. x minus 2, x minus 1. All right. x minus 2, x minus 1. Now, before we get to any kind of simplifications and things like that, I always jot down my domain restrictions here. All right. So my domain is associated with my denominator. More importantly, whatever's going to make my denominator 0. Why does it matter if my denominator is 0? Well, if my denominator is 0, then I'm dividing by 0, and I cannot divide by 0. Okay? If i got a plate of money here, $100, it just says on this plate, and I want to divide it amongst 0 people, how am I going to do that? Even if I leave that plate of money there, somebody's going to grab that money. right? You can never divide by 0. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, So my domain is all real numbers except positive 2, positive 1. So we're going to say x cannot equal positive 2 and positive 1. Some teachers might want you to say the part like the x equals all real numbers except and then write down these restrictions. I'm going to keep it nice and neat. I think putting down those two numbers that it can't be, clear enough. Okay. Now range I'm going to deal with a little bit later. All right. But I'm going to go back to my equation here and I notice I can cancel those two out. Well, what does that become? That becomes a removable discontinuity, aka a whole. All right. AKA whole in the graph, all right? So you could, it's, it's commonly referred to as a hole in the graph. The more formal uh, term for it would be removable discontinuity, right? Especially on higher level math classes like pre-calc honors, AP calculus, you're gonna see that removable discontinuity phrase uh, a little more often than you would see hole in the graph. But that's what it is, all right? Now, what does this tell me? Well, this tells me that I have a hole at uh, positive two for x, but I can also get a y value. Now, this doesn't actually exist on the graph. We're going to use it to graph it. It's going to be an open circle. But I can get my y value that this graph is going to be approaching from the left and the right-hand side. That's a future to the limits. Ooh, ooh, man, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm getting excited. All right, but how do we get that y value? Well, let's rewrite this actually here in our final simplified form. I'd have x plus 3 over x minus 1. So that's fully reduced every kind of simplification that I can do. And I can use... I can use this 2, plug it in to the simplified form, not the original, because then I would get 0 over 0 that's undefined, but in the new one here, and I can get a y value, okay? So I'm going to have 2 plus 3 over 2 minus 1. So that's going to be, what, 5 over 1? So we're going to get 5. Almost ran out of space there. So 5 would be my y value here. And I like to usually write down any of my work uh, that I would have for finding that y value right with that uh, removable discontinuity or hole right there. So I know how I got it, especially when it comes back to like looking at notes or perhaps you're on a test and something's not lining up right. You can look back at your work. Did you make some kind of a silly error um, and then check yourself, you know? Or maybe you did make an error. You didn't catch it, but your teacher caught it. You get half point maybe because you had some work. I don't know. I'm just trying to help you out here, okay? So there we go. We got a hole. Now, whatever's left in my denominator, x minus 1 here, that's still going to be you know part of my domain restrictions it's going to be some sort of a graphical feature but it's not going to be really part of the graph okay it's an asymptote okay we we'll use them when graphing rationals but they're not actually points that are on the graph but we still use them to form them okay so my vertical asymptote is whatever's left in that denominator there in this case it's x equals one that would make it undefined okay you got to have the x equals here for a vertical asymptote or horizontal asymptote would be y equals because it's an equation of a line okay so i'm actually going to pop that on here right now x equals one that is going to be a dashed line vertical line x equals one all right and i'll even pop it next to it it's nice it's formal okay very neat all right how about my my horizontal asymptote let's go with that here so my horizontal asymptote there's actually some rules involved here if my degree in my numerator and my degree in the denominator are the same thing as my values for x that I'm plugging in get infinitely larger, more positive, or infinitely larger negative numbers, right? Like negative a million, negative 10 million, whatever. The numerator and denominator are going to even each other out. These, like the x, the negative 3x, the minus 6, the plus, those are insignificant when we get to 
huge X values. If I take a million, I square it. That's way bigger than just a million or way bigger than negative 3 million, right? So these all become insignificant. It's just these two here. So since X squared and X squared are the same thing, anything divided by itself is equal to one. So if you were to look at a table, you would see as I get really big X values or really negative X values that our graph tends to that Y value of one. So that's our horizontal asymptote. All right, so now I'm gonna go in, ahead and jot in the y equals one line. And this is you know, totally a coincidence that we had x equals one for a vertical asymptote and y equals one for a horizontal asymptote. They do are not always gonna be the same thing. They're in no relation with each other in that way, okay? All right, what else we got here? So x and y intercepts. Do you remember how we get those? Well, if I wanna get a y intercept, that's, that's actually the easier one to get oftentimes. I can just plug in zero for X and I'm going to put down zero here, right? For my X value. And if I know my X value is zero, I can plug that in and get my Y value. So we'll show a little work on that, right? So if I plugged in zero here, I would get zero plus three over zero minus one. That's three over negative one, which is negative three. So my ordered pair will be zero, negative three. Nice. How about uh, an X intercept? Well, an x-intercept would require my y value to be zero. Hmm. How am I going to get a y, how do I get a zero output here, right? What x value when plugged in, and we can use the simplified one right here, what x value when plugged in would give me zero for my output? Well, we know we can't divide by zero, right? I, if I plugged in one, it's undefined. I can't divide by zero. But I can do zero divided by some number as long as it's not zero, right? We don't want zero over zero, but I could have zero over five, zero over two, zero over 7,000. That's gonna equal zero, right? So if I, if I uh, say plugged in negative three here, meaning I took X plus three and I set it equal to zero, that's gonna give me X equals negative three. If I plug negative three in, I'm gonna get zero divided by negative four, that's most certainly zero. All right, so we're gonna get negative three for my X value. So there's my X intercept, my Y intercept. Excellent, wonderful, fantastic. Also, total coincidence that these are negative three and negative three there, right? I swear, it's a coincidence. They can be totally different, right? It just, it happens sometimes. And then people freak out, you know? It happens, all right. Let's plot, let's plot all three of these points here, okay? So we got two five, so two, one, two, and then one, two, oops, didn't mean to do that. One, two, three, four, five. And then, with a hole or removable discontinuity, we do an open point like that, okay? X intercept, negative three, zero, one, two, three. That's a regular point. And zero, negative three. Okay, cool. So generally speaking, we're only really gonna be asking you for the key graphical features here, asymptotes, X and Y intercepts if they exist, and also uh, holes if, or removable discontinuities if they exist. We have all those things plotted. Another thing I'll often do is say, you gotta have at least a point on each side of the asymptote here. And that's also helpful when sometimes the graph goes up like this, sometimes they're both going down, just kind of depends on some other things that are in the equations, which you can memorize what happens, but a lot of times it's just easier to plug in an X value, make sure you're all good, okay? Because I have two intercepts here on the left side and I have a hole on the right side, I'm not worried about plugging in any other points. I could do so, but I know uh, what this thing is going to look like. So it's gonna be coming down like so, going up. Whoop, I'm gonna go through that guy, yay. And then this graph down here, coming through those two points and getting infinitely closer to that y equals one. Make sure you're showing that you're getting closer to that y equals one and y equals one over here and not like stop and short and just like following along your x-axis. It doesn't just run in line with the x-axis by any means, okay? It's getting infinitely closer, but never touching that y uh, equals one horizontal asymptote. You can, you can cross over and come back to the horizontal asymptote, but you'll only cross over it, then you'll reapproach it. That's a little more advanced, maybe another problem, another video, another time. Um, but for this one here, it's just gonna get infinitely closer to it. It'll never ever cross or touch a vertical asymptote. Never ever cross or touch those. The horizontal asymptotes are the kind of the weird ones where you can cross them, come back, or you might just cross right over it. There's some interesting things with horizontals later on in your mathematical journey, okay? Cool, so that's the entire graph. But we got two more questions down here. We got M behavior and we have vertical asymptote behavior. I'm gonna switch to green, okay? It's a, too much of the same color right now, okay. And I like I like having the colors pop, makes the math pop. 
and behavior. We're talking about as x approaches negative infinity, meaning as I go to the left side of the graph, we're going to be approaching 1. So f of x approaches 1. And as x approaches positive infinity, f of x approaches whoop, 1. So your end behavior is going to always match, always match your horizontal asymptote value right there if you have a horizontal asymptote, okay? So it will always match the horizontal asymptote if you have one. There are things called like oblique asymptotes. They're slants. Again, that's other stuff not in this video, okay? Next one, vertical asymptote behavior. So we're talking about what's happening here at x equals 1. Well, there's two different things happening. We're going up on the right-hand side. We're going down on the left-hand side. If only there was some mathematical notation to dictate what side I'm coming from. There is, okay? So we're going to say as x approaches positive 1 from the left, we throw a little negative up in like the exponent spot there, right? The superscript, I think that's called. I don't know. Yeah, because lower subscript, I think that's superscript, whatever. All right. What is f of x approaching? Well, it's going, let's see, ooh, ooh, this side from the left, going to negative infinity. So negative infinity. Running out of a little bit of room there. All right. And then the last one here, as x approaches 1 from the right-hand side, so as I'm coming from the right over here, I'm shooting up f of x is approaching positive infinity. There we go, dogs. Excellent. Fantastic. Wonderful. My goodness, I almost forgot the range. Woo! Man, that would have been bad. It would have been like a cliffhanger. People would have been like, bro, what's the range? I need to know. Okay, I got you. Don't worry. Range. It's all about the y values that I cannot equal. So one of the ones that we cannot equal is y equals 1 here because I'm just going to be approaching it and approaching it, getting infinitely close to it, never equal it. So y cannot equal 1. What else can it not equal? Well, it's not going to equal the y value of the whole, which we know is positive 5 right here. So we'll throw 5 right there as well. I do like to graph it first, come back to it. Maybe start, be like, hey, I got to come back to this. If it's asked on a test, you don't miss it like I almost did right here because uh, it's easy to, to skip over things and forget to come back. But always double check that. All right. That's a lesson learned right there, man. All right. That's dope. Rational functions. Tons of stuff going on. Got to be able to factor. Pay attention to the details. That's about it. See you dogs later.